edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The exception mean of danger is messenger and the exception mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Sharon Lynn. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it really does mean a lot to us um, to be able to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present um, to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. Now, I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angel oracle cards, and divine presence to assist you in remembering why you are here, your spiritual path, and the clarity on the next steps to take. I also offer a multidimensional retreat, a virtual retreat, several transformational packages, the journey through lifetimes, a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence, a physical retreat down in Glastonbury, and various workshops. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey. A mini guided meditation, an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Sharon Lynn, who will be talking about expanding consciousness and who knows where this conversation will go. Now, Sharon holds the space for empowerment through awareness. And like most light workers and way showers, Sharon is aware of many hats. Her current focus is being, um, is being an expanding consciousness, consciousness mentor to those who are ready to raise their vibration and step into their most empowered and joyous selves. Sharon qualified as a vibrational healer in 2001 and has been practicing energy work in connecting to and communicating with things unseen ever since. Along with Lorenzo Gashini, and if I apologize if I pronounced that wrongly, <laughs> Sharon set up Mystic Mouse Publishing in 2007 to publish the Crystal Skull message cards. Sharon, aka known as White Elk Woman, Mystic Mouse, is also co creator of the Crystal Skull message meditation book, Shadow Light Cards, Wolf Life Cards, Wolf, Wolf Life Path Cards, Healing CDs, Conscious Creatures Coloring Book, to name just a few of the many things that she's created. Now, Sharon is also a speaker, author, connector, and workshop facilitator, whose talks, workshops, and one-to-one -one sessions always aim to be fun, enlightening, inspiring, and most of all, empowering and expansive. So if you are ready for some deeper insights and a loving kick up the bum, Sharon could be just the right person for you right now. And having experienced some of um, uh, Sharon's uh, talks and that is very, very inspirational. So without further delay, hello, Sharon, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are hello. you today? Hello. Well, despite having told my husband that I'm just about to go live, he's banging away in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Don't we, we 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 just love the way I, I, I don't know I don't know whether you can hear him, but uh oh dear. He shut the door, but I'm still sitting here going, Yeah, I can hear the banging away. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can hear I can hear I I can hear the banging every now and again. Um I hope he's doing something for you. He absolutely 100% totally is. He's actually uh, building me my new office uh, desk having... Uh, now the phone's going off. I mean, honestly, you can't make it up, can you? Come I said to him, I'm going to give you the phone. I'm not expecting any calls, but just in case. <laughs> to, to be fair, it's probably Lorenzo because he thought I was going to get on the call at three o'clock. But, uh, uh, but yes, no, I've got a wonderful new uh, office desk being made for me as we speak. So, uh, oh, yeah. Excellent. But hence, at the moment, I'm in my uh, sunroom, uh, as you can see with the pictures and bits on. I wouldn't normally be sitting in here, but uh, yeah. It looks so, it look it looks good, which is the main thing. Yeah, lovely buffalo. I thought a nice little bit of grounding there and a bit of abundance. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, and, and that's one of the pictures from the, um, the Conscious Creatures, isn't it? It is indeed. It is yeah. indeed, which yes. Which we'll be getting into a little bit later. <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Sharon and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. 
So Sharon, why don't you tell us more about your personal journey and about expanding consciousness? <laughs> well, uh, mm, where do I start? 1998 is where it really all started when I met my current husband who's banging around making my new office desk for me, bless him. Perfect. <laughs> so perfect to uh, talk about him and involve him so as not to be left out. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'll give you a, a whistle stop. I will just let whatever needs to come out of my mouth come out and hopefully whatever that is will be uh, relevant to whoever's listening. Um because how can you possibly put, you know, 30, nearly 30 odd years of stuff into, uh, you know, a couple of minutes. But um, I started off, I'd been, I'd been interested in all of this stuff for a very long time, but I'd had a really crappy relationship like many of us do. Um, and just didn't really sort of settle into learning anything about it until I met my current husband. So Brian, bless him, uh, took me to a spiritual church. Uh, and um, within about three weeks of meeting him, I was up doing Dems of Mediumship. And it was a bit like, whoa, OK, where did this come from? <laughs> I mean, you know, I had an interest, but uh, it was one of those careful what you wish for, you know, having seen a medium and gone, oh, that would be really cool if I could do that. Uh, lo and behold, ta-da. So, um, yeah, so that's how I started. Uh, Brian and I became vibrational healers back in 2001 so that's crystal healing with the use of, well crystal and spiritual healing with the use of sound and color um, I tend not to really practice any of that um, anymore it's all you know that was part of the initial learning process um, that we all go through but massively transformational that was um, that led me to, well, that was really where expanding consciousness started, but just didn't realise it at the time and obviously didn't have a label for it. Um, so I spent probably about nine years, I think, as a, as a healer and as a medium and going around, you know, either shows, events, organising my own shows, events and doing one to ones and things like that. Um, and as you said, we set up Mystic Mouse Publishing because I had the uh, divine intervention from out of nowhere at one point that we should create a set of crystal skull message cards oracle cards because there weren't any out there and everybody was getting very fascinated by crystal skulls so for a few years i was known as the crystal skull lady i've been known as the drum lady the crystal skull lady the this lady the that lady the bee lady the wolf lady the dog lady the <laughs> um so, yeah, wearer of many hats, as, as many of us light workers are, for sure, for sure. Um, but, yeah, we set up Mystic Mouse Publishing. I uh, was working with the Crystal Skulls. That was a real massive turning point for me um, because I realised that actually I was working in very different frequencies when I was working with the Crystal Skull consciousness. Um no better, no worse, it's just different. <laughs> um, so I actually had to just go cold turkey on the all the mediumship stuff that I was doing and all the psychic stuff um, because I realised that actually wandering around in the astral realms wasn't particularly healthy. Um, so I'd been an empath for many years and, you know, was doing all of that stuff. Um, and... Yeah, so I just decided I needed to stop that and see where things took me. Um, and as I say, Mystic Mouse was born, so we started to work very, you know, very much with the Crystal Skull consciousness. So then came some Crystal Skull retreats and some more expanding awareness and uh, da -de da um, So sort of coming to where we're at now, um, so many, many, many moons later, <laughs> you know, mi missing out a few near death experiences and whatnot. I suppose probably actually I should I should not come right to now and probably come as far forward as 2018 if we're looking at the linear timeline of things, because, as you know, um, I nearly wasn't here. <laughs> um, so I've had a couple of, you know, two or three sort of near death uh, 
experiences up, up to that point. I think it's uh, a lot of that is um, uh, what's the word? Menopausal brain has now just kicked in and can't find the right word. It's sort of enveloped, if you like, all yeah. wrapped up in with the shamanic side of things. Um, so, yeah, so I worked shamanically for a, a very, very long time as well. Um, what was I saying before I had my menopausal halfway through a sentence? I know. I, sentence. I, I, hate, I hate it. Oh, that was it. That was it. 2018. Yes. Um, How could you uh, get that one? Yeah, pre previous, previous uh, near-death experiences had been sort of what I had put down to shamanic sort of vibrational deaths and rebirths um so i talked about ascension and ascension symptoms a lot when i was working with the crystal skulls because obviously we had the whole 2012 mayan thing uh you know was the world going to end etc cetera, etc cetera. um and i think it was just a you know it was i say just but it was a massive sort of pivotal vibrational time and i think actually you know, we're now in another one of those. It does feel very, very pivotal. Um, you know, we, we've been sort of in it uh, in human form in linear time for those that aren't maybe quite so expanded in their consciousness as yet. Um, I think we've been in this sort of last mega shift, as I call it, um, for probably a good few months to a year or so before lockdown and COVID and all that shenanigans. So, you know, it's not an overnight thing. I think we've been prepping for it for some time. But anyway, I digress already. So nearly died in 2018. Um, and that was that. I mean, that was epic. I mean, I won't go into all the ins and outs of why and all the rest of it. But what it really... Um, cemented for me I suppose is the whole sense of beingness and the whole you know interconnectedness of everything so whilst most of us understand that at a an intellectual cerebral level um, I think there's probably still there's still the minority of people who have actually embodied and totally vibrationally experienced it at any given point and I think this is where, for me, expanding consciousness is is really um, it, it's fascinating, but extraordinarily difficult. In inverted commas, you know, I like my air quotes <laughs> for words that I don't really mean that word quite so strongly, but there's not a, another one for it. Um, but it is really, um, yeah, difficult, challenging, whatever you want to label it to explain um these sorts of vibrations and principles and the the you know um oneness of all that is and the beingness of everything and you know some people will you know hit, have heard me speak over the years and you can just see them glazing over and going yeah, what, what planet is she on like this doesn't make any sense to me at all um so yeah so i mean expanding consciousness well, I'll tell you what, I don't say her name, kick her off. You know the Echo Dot box whose name shall not be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I quite often ask her things and her definition of consciousness is the state of being conscious. So, you know, in human terms, that's the state of being awake and aware and alive. And she says it's the awareness of one's own existence one's own surroundings and thoughts. That's in its very simplest terms. So consciousness to me is about being awake, being aware um, of, again, I'm gonna say it, everything and all that is. <laughs> um, but particularly um, in the, as far as like the expanding consciousness goes, for me, it is very much thought based. Um, and that's where the the shadow light cards came in that we used on the last live that we did. So one of the things that we brought through from 
um, Mystic Mouse Publishing was this little, what I call, pocket rocket tool um, for shifting one state because, you know, we all have crappy times. We all have, you know, moments of, uh. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and even this morning I was saying to my mum, well, what's the bad thing you're feeling? And then, you know, and this is somebody who really doesn't get what I do. You know, she loves her crystals and things, bless her, and they're all pretty and, you know, but yeah. she really struggles. Um, and I said, well, what's the bad thing you're feeling? And she was like, blah, blah. And I went, well, what's the opposite of that? And she went, blah, blah. And I went, well, right, now just let's just say that you are that. Because she was like, I don't understand what affirmations are. So again, affirmations have been absolutely, literally life changing and I would say life saving actually from when I was nearly not here back in 2018. Um, and so the shadow light cards are, are that, they're, that, they're this little tool that just in that moment you can just go, here you go, um, you know, this is the light that I need to carry. So if I can just sort of, I'm just going to sidestep slightly mm. between raising what's, this is what I wrote down before we, we you know, sort of connected. Um, because up until fairly recently, what I was doing as a mentor, so all through lockdown, was I, I was actually labelling myself as a raising consciousness mentor. And I thought, do you know what? I don't think you can raise your consciousness. You can expand it, <laughs> but you can't raise it. So it, it sort of brought up the the sort of, so what I wrote was actually, <laughs> I don't know how the auto captions are going to work with this because because I stop halfway through a sentence that, all the time. I'm just, just imagining the auto captions coming up going. So funny. <laughs> It's going to be hysterical trying to t do a transcript. But anyway, what I wrote down was raising vibration versus expanding consciousness. You know, as a conversation, what's the difference between the two? And I, and I think, you know, really actually one sort of, it's also almost an iterative process, one almost leads to the other and then back again in sort of a circle because if one raises vi one's vibration whether that be by singing dancing working with a crystal laughing yoga meditation all these wonderful things oh for which actually i'm i've just got a uh, there'll be a uh, 45 ways to raise your vibe ebook coming cool. uh, imminently it's it's on my uh, ipad to finish um and on the back end of that what we're fingers crossed we're planning to release in the new year is um a 90 days of awesome journal is what i'm going to call it but essentially it's the it's doing those 45 actually doing those 45 things doing something every day because this is what i find and i'm sure you do with your clients People just forget to do the simplest things yeah, to right. raise their vibration, you know, and we're here to give them that loving kick up the backside. I had a client this week, um, you know, and I more or less repeated everything that I'd said to her about three months ago. I started off the session by saying to her, I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know. and you know what you need to know and you know what you need to do. And this goes to anybody that's watching. We all know it. It's just in the middle of the thought and the thinking, you know, we just, we allow the thoughts to perpetuate the things that we maybe don't really want. So for me, expanding consciousness is a it's about awareness absolutely being aware of where you're at what you're thinking what you're feeling and then if there's something about it that you're not fussed on <laughs> do something to shift it so you know intention 
um, holding the intention of raising the vibration. And even if you've got no tools, you know, and you're sitting in the middle of a field or in the middle of rubbish, it doesn't matter because it, it vibrationally, you know, we are all that we ever need to be. Um, we just need to remember that. <laughs> yeah, like, like if you're stuck in the middle of a traffic jam. Yeah. You, know, you can't go anywhere. So just take some breaths and raise your consciousness. And yeah. you never know that traffic jam may just clear a lot quicker than you think. Yeah. It's, uh, so, so I think, you know, raising vibration in turn assists us in expanding the consciousness. And so the consciousness in its simplest terms from a singular human perspective is just our own personal awareness of um, <laughs> everything and nothing all at the same time. Um, it's our thinking that trips us up for absolute sure. Um, if we then look at the collective consciousness you know, for me, that's, you know, my personal experience is that it's it's what I call the, I suppose it's what I call the goop. It's sort of like it is, you know, it's everybody's thoughts, thinking and, you know, and and depending on where you're at and where your thoughts are and at what level you're tapping into, does... Um, dictate your experience of what you're connecting to or how you're connecting so quite often you'll hear me talking about tapping into the collective conscious or the collective unconscious because there's the collective consciousness which is where everybody is awake and they know what they're doing and thinking but that doesn't always mean that it's the highest vibration. No. Just because they're awake and aware doesn't always mean that that collective conscious is a good consciousness to tap into. Yeah. So a classic example is lockdown. Mm. Um, the collective conscious was, you know, what for well, in whatever whatever level, mm. but people were awake knowing what they were thinking and feeling. So we, but that, but that wasn't a great thought or feeling to be tapping into for the most part. The collective unconsciousness or the collective unconscious, again, it, it's almost like a dual duality, almost dual reality, because you you can have the unconscious dark stuff that people have just swept under the carpet. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's the again the you know the the grey area, if you like. Um, anyway. I, I sidestep. You see, I think, you know, anybody listening will get, I think, where I'm yeah. going with that. So I think importantly is tips and tools for people to be able to empower themselves mm -hmm. in any given moment, in any given situation. Um, what was... Uh, I was just going to sidestep side again. Lorenzo and I, well, it's mainly Lorenzo's baby at the moment. He's working on something called deconstructing reality, uh, which will be coming out at some point when we've got some sort of handle on how on earth to explain it to people. We've had the most amazing conversations the last four or five weeks and, um, you know, where he's, he there's sort of three three or four different principles that he's working with around consciousness and thought but but the key thing and one of his quotes the other day uh, it might not be word for word it was something I just jotted down in conversation but it's along the lines of get your thoughts out of the way get your thinking mind out of the way and let 
the universal intelligence, you know, that I think he used the word wellspring, the wellspring of universal intelligence to bubble up. And, you know, this is sort of what I would class as going with the flow. Yeah. And it's fascinating to be in the awareness of every single thought that you have and the impact that that actually has on your well-being, that of other people, you know. And, and then we also get into the quantum physics side of things of expanding consciousness and can we actually deconstruct our reality and then reconstruct it but without thought I mean we have I don't know a gazillion thoughts a day yeah. don't we so and I know we delete a lot of them and I know we generalize a lot of them if you think of the NLP distort delete and generalize you know that's part of it all um uh, what was I saying? Let me come back with my thread. So, uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I've got lots of different threads going on at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, importantly, again, I shall reiterate, <laughs> let your thinking mind get out of the way so that the wellspring of universal intelligence can bubble up. So, Going back to what I was saying about, you know, for me, this is going with the flow. This is what I would class as going with the flow, you know, trying not to force something to happen, trying not to butt up against something. Um, and I think also the more expanded one's consciousness gets, the more aware one gets, the more um, aware of one's own beingness and existence the clearer one's purpose becomes everybody's looking for their purpose aren't they in this yeah. in this you know like I don't know about you but how many readings have we done over the years you know what's my purpose yeah um, and in fact we we were on a zoom call Renzo and I were on a, a deconstructing reality zoom call last week we're just sort of piloting it at the moment with three or four people and it's literally like you and I we're just having a conversation yeah. we're going you know what do you think and this that there's no there's no training there's no this is a way of doing something to get to this there's no it's just a conversation around hang on you know there's some principles here that if we worked with them might actually assist us yeah. and um and one of the guys on the call sort of going back to purpose was like you know <laughs> I, I've and if he's watching he'll know who he is and I'm you know talking about him but he was like um it's only you know fairly recently that I thought I understood what my purpose was and where I was supposed to be going with it so I've gone off, I've tried to do all of this and every every which way I'm butting up right. against something, right? And Renzo and I were sort of like, yeah, okay. And it's like, but how do we explain, you know, what we're trying to explain? And I did a very bad job of, of trying to explain that actually you, you can't, how, how, let me try and find the right words. Um, what, what it, again going back to the thinking brain so the thinking brain for this person was I think I know what I'm supposed to be doing therefore I'm going to go do that what we're doing with expanding consciousness and deconstructing reality is actually just pulling at all the threads of if you imagine your cobweb yeah you know, spider's web and it's just like pull at all of those unpick them all I suspect you do something similar when you're doing your timeline stuff you know we're just unraveling all these threads so that we we almost we're never as humans not gonna not think no, that, that that would be totally impossible <laughs> that you know because then we wouldn't be we wouldn't be human but yeah. um it's allowing a different 
way of being with your thoughts in order to then, I'll say it again, let the wellspring of universal intelligence just bubble up. Um, and it, 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 but it's so, again, I'm going to use the word difficult. It's so difficult to try and explain these principles and this way of being to somebody who is maybe you know very busy work you know working a job got bills to pay you know because they will sit there and they'll go but I can't not think about all of that and I can't not do something about yeah. all of that and and I mean I I have really not properly worked and I who knows whether I will actually you know do go back to doing 60 70 hours yeah. a week like I used to um but I you know pretty much my days are allowing the universal intelligence unless I, unless there's somebody else interferes with my day yeah <laughs> you know um it's like just allowing that to just be um and you know and people will look at my life from the outside in and go well it's all right for you because you don't have to and you you can just sit there you haven't got a job and you haven't got kids and you haven't got a dog and you haven't got and I'm like yeah but actually I've created this reality through my expanded consciousness through my years of affirmations, through my nearly not being here revelations, you know, so, and, and people, you know, a lot of people will sort of say, well, how do you flick the switch when something happens and, you know, to just go, well, actually, I don't want that. I want to feel like this. And, and that's what I, you know, that's what I try to sort of empower people and try to I say teach in the loosest yeah. po possible way. Um, yeah, I mean, a lady last week, again, if she's listening to this, she'll know who she is. But, you know, she was she's still such an empath. You know, she's still working very much in what I would call the um, sort of astral plane and the sort of the psychic sort of realm. And you know, her thinking is she's not confident, you know, she can't charge, da, 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 da. you know, again, you, you know, a lot of people listening are going to be going, oh, that's me, I don't feel worthy, I haven't got the confidence, you know, I don't know how to, you know, why should anybody listen to me, da, 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 da. anyway, she was empathing her client. And the, the previous night to the call, I had had a little funny bit going on in my stomach and I'm like, whoa, hang on a minute. Since I nearly died and had my hysterectomy and all the rest of it, I haven't felt that. I haven't yeah. felt that for three years. I was like, hang on a minute. Where's this coming from? And because of my own teachings and expanded consciousness, in a, literally in a second, I was like, ah, oh, do you know what? Maybe I'm picking up on my client tomorrow. So I, so I just went, right raise my vibration, no thank you very much, that doesn't belong to me, off you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was gone. And she, she said to me, but how, how, do you, how do you do that? She was like, because it's like, I, you know, I've tried doing that and I've tried, you know, and there was cutting cords and this and there was a whole process of stuff that was going on. And I'm like, all I can tell you is you just have to keep raising your vibration you just have to keep expanding your consciousness in and growing in whatever way you know because we're all on a different path we're all on uh you know a, a different vibration on a different timeline ish to you know uh, to how we're learning and how we're growing and we've all got different lessons and different understandings and things that we need to experience and things that you know we've come through so you know 
as I say, people look at me now from the outside in and go, well, hey, it's all right for you. You've now got your lovely bungalow and your garden and you don't have to work and you can potter about. Well, I do still work. I mean, I'm still, yep. you know, I'm still connecting. I'm still here. I'm still sharing. We're still producing products. We're still creating. I mean, we're now working with the... Um, you know, a couple of uh, animal conservation places, which is which is going to segue nicely into conscious creatures in yes. a minute, and our little card. Um, you know, so I am still doing, but I'm doing most of. I let's be honest, I'm not perfect. I still have my moments. I still have my days where something gets in my head, and it, you know, it's like but, a pity party. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's just like, oh, do you know what? But even on those days, even on those days, I still feel, I don't even know how to describe it, so much better than I ever used to, I suppose, I want a better way of putting it. But I talk to people a lot about the emotional scale. Um, and again, this has been really key in I think it helping me to expand the consciousness and um understand where I am in my feelings if I have a blip if I have a bad day so my you know my core energy I like I haven't got a very big screen there we go so if we if we use that as the emotional scale right this is where we all want to be of course up here yeah. isn't it um most of us sort of have a a midline and you know we can get up here you know quite regularly if we do our stuff and we you know we meet with other like minds and you know do something to raise our vibration we can get into joy and peace and bliss and harmony and but more often than not we then interact with somebody who's down here and yeah. then oh. <laughs> yep. um you know, my personal experience, obviously, with, with what's happened in my life over the last couple of years, um, you know, is that I found myself in a situation with somebody who was here through no fault of their own, couldn't couldn't get themselves back up. And me trying, you know, normally what would happen, and as you know, from a client stroke um, mentor perspective is if you're here as the mentor and your client is here normally what happens is you or what should happen is you should be holding your vibration here and allowing your client they're not they'll, they'll they might come here and meet you momentarily in the session but after the session they're going to go back down again but the idea is that they don't go down quite so far now if I go back a few years before all of this, you know, really kicked in for me, when I was doing mediumship, and I think probably most mediums will do the same. So anybody that's watching this, if you're doing mediumship still and you're in that sort of psychic soup, as I call it, I can guarantee most of you and, you know, private message me and call me a liar if you like. I don't mind. But I guarantee that most of you, instead of staying here, and allowing your client to do this, I can guarantee most of you will do this. And then that's then your core, that's where you're, you know, so your client might come up here a little bit and they'll probably come here to meet you in the session. But then if they are not empowering themselves and they're not expanding their consciousness, they're going to go back down here. Yeah. And then you've got to work a, again to get yourself back up here and if you're if you're dealing with clients like at that level every single day this is what's going to happen yeah. and that is why I stopped mediumship because I was constantly doing that I was constantly going down they were coming up a little bit but now my my default energy is you know fairly near the top all the time Yes, I dip. Of course I do. And I will have moments where I go right down to the bottom in grief and overwhelm and, you know, blame and depression and, you know, but they're so, so fleeting. Those moments yes. are so fleeting. And the thing with expanding consciousness is, you know, that you know you're there. 
Whereas most people who aren't empowering themselves and aren't working with raising their vibration and expanding their consciousness and thinking about consciousness in a different way and, you know, actually stopping to try and think, <laughs> put a full stop there, stopping, try and think, um, it, you know, it's very difficult for them to, you know, understand um that wasn't what I was going to say. Completely lost my thread. Anyway, um, so yeah, conscious creatures. Yes, conscious creatures. <laughs> and, gonna, uh, and, uh, uh, anyway, I, I hope that was you know I hope I hope that was uh, useful. Um, it it, 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 it makes it makes sense, you know, and it gives people something to think about and to connect with and go. Actually, yeah, maybe I need to reframe a lot of stuff um that, that 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 that's 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 actually going on i found um, a really really good um i think it was uh i think it was i think it's brie brown is it brie brown or Breen brown or something um i've never met her no idea who she is but i just wanted a quick um screenshot of the emotional scale for somebody the other day um and it, it's the, it was the abraham hicks um scale that was on this lady's yeah. website um and i read all her stuff and i thought yeah do you know what she's put that so succinctly she's put that way better than i i you know could have done in you know like the 30 seconds that i had to try and explain to this lady um so i might actually uh, go and find that again and put the link in here because it's she's nothing to yeah. do with me i've no idea who she is i'm sure she won't mind a little bit of promotion no. But it, but it was just a brilliant page. It was about a 10 minute read and it shows you the emotional scale. It explains some of the things that I've just tried to sort of explain, but she does it really well. And, it, and then actually explains how to move yourself up it. So how, you know, if you know that you're in blame or overwhelm, the next little bit is sort of pessimism and boredom. And it's like, well, well now I can sort of yeah. maybe emotionally or think myself into pessimism and boredom I mean when I when I was working with it you know I said to my husband I said all I know all I need to do now is just get bored and pessimistic so I tell you what um I'm really bored and I don't know that I'm going to be able to get out of this situation right and, and I mean like, all joking aside that's all I needed to do yeah was literally just state that I was bored and that I didn't think I could do something because that's pessimism. Yeah. And I was, and it wasn't long before I then got into contentment and hope. And, you know, and then when you're in contentment and hope, you go, oh, well, maybe I could allow myself to get excited or enthusiastic yeah. about something now. And it honestly is so, so, so powerful. Um, so, yeah. And then, you know, and affirmations, as I say, you know, going back to that, um which of course you know we've got in the conscious creatures every single one of them has got an affirmation so shall i shuffle a card and yeah. see let's yeah. um let's yeah, get all of, off all of this heavy thinking stuff and just let exactly. the, let's, uh, let's, see, let's see what the conscious so how did the conscious creatures cards come about or how did conscious well come about? out of my out of my near-death experience actually so um we think Matey chops here. Hang on, where are we? Let's the go lion. back. Beautiful right. white lion. Lion, right. So how it all came about was after I nearly wasn't here in 2018, I then subsequently had to get my body well, I, I had to learn how to actually even have a body again because literally everything shut down I mean that was I couldn't speak I couldn't drink I couldn't eat I couldn't walk I mean for anybody that doesn't know me that is when I say I nearly wasn't here I mean I literally mean I was on death's door yeah. I went from seven stone to five and a half stone in like two to three weeks um so I had to relearn how to be a human being again yeah. <laughs> Um, so I then spent the next year, nine months to a year, thereabouts-ish, building myself up enough to then have to go in for another 
major surgery because they cut me from above my belly button down to as far down as you can go without being you know yep. <laughs> right so I had a nine inch incision top to bottom I then had to build myself up enough to be able to go back in and have that same cut from top to bottom again to have everything removed in 2019 so they took away seven bits of me <laughs> the magic number seven yeah they took away seven bits in 2019 um and on my second day so up the day after my surgery um thankfully i was well enough after that i still i have my mobile phone with me i was well enough to communicate with the world this time so that was nice and i picked up an email that said here you go mouse because that's lorenzo's name for me i am the mystic mouse we are the mystic mouse really yeah. but um yeah here you go mouse that was it here you go mouse and i opened it up and there was white lion and i cried <laughs> um Again, this is, this is another interview and another conversation for another day, white lions and my and how I feel about them and how connected and all the rest of it. But anyway, I cried and I went, wow. And then the following day, there was another animal. And then the next day, there was another animal. And so for the five days that I was sort of having my surgery and then coming home, there were five animal, five different animals turned up from photographs that he's taken so where is he this this here yeah <laughs> this is one of lorenzo's as as you say he's in the in the conscious creatures so these five animals turned up and i went hmm yeah ting idea <laughs> uh and so he just kept creating um i put a few out on facebook everybody went oh these will make a fantastic power animal deck and so beginning of this year we made it happen yeah. So that's the that's the very short version. But what what isn't in the book that I'm hoping we will now be able to put in the book? I've been trying to find out exactly who all these animals are. We had we we knew where they'd come from. If you if you see what I mean, yeah. some of them are Shutterstock photographs because he just couldn't go and photograph an orangutan or a whale or you know I don't know no. why. But <laughs> Well, you, you could do, but it'll take a bit of time getting think, there, you'd, coming you'd back. So, wouldn't you? Um, so, uh, yeah. So, anyway, most most of the images are Lorenzo's, and I wanted to find out who was who. Anyway, anybody who uh, follows the Big Cat Sanctuary will know that they've just lost one of their – in fact, in the last two weeks, they've lost two of their white lions – I must try not to get emotional now because every time I think about it, I get, and I did, didn't even know them. I didn't even meet them. However, I think maybe I did. Yeah. Because I think this is Ngozi. So literally this week I have actually pulled myself together enough to message the big cat sanctuary and go, who exactly are these? And so because in the, in the cards we've also got, tiger um cheetah and snow leopard to go with white lion and they were all from photographs from the big cat sanctuary as far as i can i can tell from what renzo said so anyway so i've been in touch with them this week to sort of say this lion was he so he's been hanging on my wall actually i should have swapped out the um I should have swapped out the buffalo and put white lion up there because um, he's been hanging on my wall as a sparkly canvas ever since my op in 2019. Yeah. And I mean, he is part of my daily life without, you know, without me ever having met him. <laughs> and then when that email came through, I was like, oh, my God, I really think I probably shouldn't say God, should I? It's not politically. Oh, my goodness. Um, not to offend anybody <laughs> um yeah when that email came through i thought you know what i'm fairly sure that that is ngozi so watch this space on that yeah. one um because if we can next year 
put a face and a name and a character and a story to all of the, well, certainly 22 of the 42, I think it might be 27, as I, I think at least half of what's in this set, um, you know, Lorenzo has, has photographed. So if we can actually put names and stories to all of those, that's just going to make it so powerful. So I've shuffled, right, Yeah. Uh, while I've been talking, and this is who's come out. So oh, I, was just, I was just talking about, uh, about the big cats. So Cheetah says, um, I am flexible. Uh, I don't actually think he's the one that... Um, as it goes, I don't actually think he's the one that should have come out for what I would, because I haven't actually put the intention out yet. So we'll see. I'll put him back in and see if yeah, it is we'll the see, one. See. So my my, so that's how they came about, basically. The long version of the short version that I was trying to tell yeah. you, right? Um, so let's just see. Huh, this is funny because this was the one that was on the bottom, and I thought, <laughs> blow me down. You can't make it up, can you? Look, you, you can't. You, you can't this, really. This one, this one is now. Uh, <laughs> ah. snow leopard but the one that has actually come out for all of us um insofar as my intention was whoever is watching listening whoever taps in you know whenever whoever sees this this is um sort of a um collective message as best as we can get it for each individual, which is a bit of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? But there you go. Um, for really how to kick off 2023, but it feels like for whoever is watching, for the most part, this is a, a fairly, um, what's the word I'm looking for, overall annual energy so sort of a theme a theme energy for 2020 <laughs> 2023 let me, let me go he's, he's quite dark can you see him there yeah yeah beaver so i will just read you what i channeled for beaver because i can yeah. never remember i mean beaver to me is the master builder i mean if you think about you know their dams and what they do but they also change i mean it goes very well actually with expanding consciousness because of course yes. they change their environment you know beaver builds a dam that's the environment changed yeah exactly um, you know and the the whole ecosystem changes um so yeah so Anyway, so Beaver Wisdom. So anybody who's um, listening or who has got these, I don't know if I've actually made it that clear in the book and I need to do some more lives on this. The wisdom, yes, it came through the animal to me to channel <laughs> in the, as the part of the message, but... It's not just the animal saying this about himself or herself. The idea is to listen to this wisdom and say it as if it were you. So it's yeah. it's it, it's not quite – some of them are do work as affirmations, but not all of them. Some of them are just sort of pointing out actually how you currently are or how you could be. So with that in mind, Ray and whoever's listening – be the wisdom. Yeah. Think of this as if you are saying it yourself. Okay. I know how to make the best of the tools available to me to create the most amazing environment that benefits not only my family, but all of those around me. Okay. So he says he's a master builder. So that's the main one line affirmation. So if there's any key theme for people like going into 2023, master builder whether that's just building your foundations or whether that's really properly going for it doesn't matter but it's about building something uh, beavers are known as dam builders they are more than happy to change and shape their environment to suit their needs and create a safe haven do you need to build a metaphorical dam to keep healthy boundaries Oh, interesting, because that goes back to the emotional scale I was talking about yeah. earlier on, like don't lower your energy, right? Healthy boundaries. Um, 
Or maybe you need to open up the floodgates and let your emotions flow, which is great because tears are good for the soul. Okay. One thing I would say about that is, though, don't stay there for too long. Let it come up. Sit in the awareness of it. Feel what you need to feel. Don't wallow in it. Yes. Then shift, shift the state and go, OK, acknowledged, accepted. And just trust that by acknowledging and accepting it, that it you you've then released it and that actually you don't need to go there again yeah uh so hopefully that's useful for somebody um remember unhealthy emotions or a volatile environment can cause dis-ease ergo dis disease yeah so keep your emotions positive beavers have iron rich enamel on their teeth and their tail stores fat for the winter a reminder to review your nutritional needs so that your physical body remains in good shape. I mean, everybody knows that, but it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Everybody forgets these things sometimes, yes. don't they? So the affirmation is, I honour my innate abilities and create an environment that is safe and supportive for myself and others. Perfect. You can see that. If I get that in there, anybody who's yep. quick enough can now take a screenshot of that. <laughs> exactly. And uh, but I can always post that in the comments. I was going to say anyway. you can always uh, uh, put that in the comments. Yeah. And, and um, the information is for people. Yeah. So uh, anyway, there's a lot more I could say about that. Yeah. But uh, no, that that, is, <laughs> that 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 you know that is that is ab that is absolutely um, brilliant. You know, and what you've been talking about is so important now um, for us as individuals and as a collective um, as, as as well. And it is being very much aware of our consciousness. Um, and what we do with it and how we actually use it now. So um, really, really, really important um, things that, uh, that, 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 that have come out today on, on, the, on the conversation. So thank you so much for that. So Sharon, do you have any insights or thoughts that you could leave our viewers with? Any last minute words of wisdom? Well, I've used this, the, uh, the one that I was going to share and hopefully having repeated it three times already it might have stuck in i'm just having another shuffle just to uh, see uh, so so i'm going to let gorilla answer the question hang on where are we there we go yeah right, can you see him yeah can can see get the gorilla. light on him right so his message is i am a gentle leader right so now Remind me if you can, I'm going to write this down because what I'm actually going to share as the words of wisdom, I'm going to share it in the um, thing afterwards because to me, uh, gorilla and wild boar from this deck um, sort of go hand in hand for the message that I want to share with you, which is respond with vibration and don't react with your sort of thinking, your mouth, your human aspects <laughs> to, you know, any situation, uh, you know, that you might find yourself in that's difficult. Um, so it's, it's about being the spiritual warrior that whoever is watching, you absolutely know that you are. Um, and yeah, just responding vibrationally to the situations um, around you rather than having sort of that, you know, knee jerk reaction and then getting yourself embroiled in, you know, drama. It's like, you know, just just avoid any drama next year if you can. <laughs> um, but I'm going to I'm going to share the. Yeah, definitely going to share their words of wisdom and their affirmations um, because, yeah, for whatever reason, I just feel that they are actually quite important. So it, it's it's really, you know, it, it's all about energy. I mean, it's like I said at the beginning, I'm not, you know, I cannot tell anybody anything that they don't actually already know at their core. It's just some people haven't remembered 
how to be the best versions of themselves in this human form, in this lifetime. Uh, and like you said, you know, in the bit at, at the beginning, you know, I'm here to give you a loving kick up the backside to remind you of that, you know. I'm not any better than anybody else. No guru is any better than anybody else. We were all born the same. Um, in fact, actually, that's just reminded me of one of Renzo's, I think it was Alan Watts, who says, we're not born into the world. We're born out of it. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's quite a good place to... Uh, let you know good thing to let people ponder because just pondering that alone we're not born into the world we're born out of it i think is is a really powerful sort of concept to ponder yeah. i'm trying not to use the word think because i've been telling people not to think and to not let their thoughts get in the way so I am a spiritual warrior. I embrace the qualities of discernment, passion, and com uh, and passion and compassion, patience and compassion. I'll read that one again. I'm a spiritual warrior. I embrace the qualities of discernment, patience, and compassion. And Gorilla says, I am in tune and highly evolved. I know when and how to take charge. I am a natural leader. So it's about being the best that you can be, going and spreading your word, your vibration. <laughs> your energy. Your energy, your, yeah, passion. Your, con your conscious energy. Your, uh, yeah. From that expanded consciousness place, uh and uh yeah and i and i one final thing that's just come to me and then i'm going to shut up is that we are all quite often i've been guilty of this and i think a lot of light workers still maybe have this train of thought of raising vibration is about sort of reaching this ascended place mm -hmm. right and actually it's much more important and relevant that we anchor it's a, it's it's almost more about descension than ascension yeah to you know, totally we're here in human form and yes we are expanding and we're raising our vibration but it's about I'll say it again, tapping into the wellspring of the universal intelligence and letting it flow through us in yep. this, this form that we've come into. It's going to be a very, very, very interesting uh, year or two ahead, I think, because so many of us are shifting vibrationally in ways that we've not experienced before and ways that we can't, certainly for me, ways that I'm struggling to be able to explain to people so um yeah. keep smiling keep loving keep raising vibration and expanding consciousness and uh, all will be good in 2023 exactly um absolutely totally um so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because i know i definitely have um so if people want to connect with me sharon how do they do that um, best way is either through our website, mysticmouse.com. Facebook is fine. Uh, so on Facebook, I'm facebook.com uh, slash Sharon.l.lin. Um, and then from there, you can go to various groups and pages and bits and pieces. Um, I've got a higher awareness development group, which is a, um, a private group. Um, so, you know, you can PM me, um, but mysticmouse.com 
is uh, pretty much the hub of everything now. Finally, after all these years, we've now got a new brand spanking new website. So that's all being built. Yes, yeah, so we've got the store on there. We've got expanding consciousness. We've got our red bubble shop. That's sort of like the the hive of where to yeah. go, really. That's where you'll find all the goodies, all the, you know, the free free ebooks and things like that once we get around to it so yeah. mysticmouse.com or come and find me on facebook via you really because uh... <laughs> yeah and what i'll do is I'll, um, I'll put those links in the comments so people just literally need to click on them um to to act to actually find you um on there um and of course you know um when we do some well-being events which i'm pretty sure we're going to be doing at the little horse yard next year you know we do live so you'll be able to see sharon again live um, and we'll definitely get you back on the show. And maybe we can get Lorenzo onto the show. Well, I nearly asked him today, actually, when you said we could possibly do Zoom and not be, because there's no way he's going to, I mean, I had enough trouble with the tech. There's no way, he's only just about managed Zoom. There's no way he's going to figure this out. But I, I nearly said to you, can we do a Zoom and I'll invite him on. But yeah, give, give, us, a, give us another few weeks while he's uh, yeah. sorting out his deconstructing reality. And I think actually, yeah, it would be really, really cool to have him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, show I, his face. He, he, oh God, he, we just don't tell him. Don't tell him that it's going out on Facebook and YouTube, and you know we're just having a conversation. That's <laughs> exactly, ex exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. No, that that'll be brilliant. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. If we can look at doing that sometime or, um, at the beginning of next year, and whatever, that'll be absolutely br uh, brilliant because yeah. that'll help people set people up um for the year so thank you so much sharon it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the show that was a long, finally, long half an hour wasn't it <laughs> finally got you on the show which is absolutely brilliant um and i'm sure everyone that's watching you'll agree it's been absolutely fascinating and please do check out uh, mystic mouse you know the conscious creatures cards um the crystal skull cards you know they're absolutely um amazing you know and crystal skull is completely another conversation that we can have um, in 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 the future, which will be absolutely amazing, as and when it's time for them to actually uh, be a little bit more prominent, because they're 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 getting there slowly but surely. Um, so I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this, and of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me, and we can arrange a free video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into the future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts. So again, thank you everyone so much for watching um and posting your comments and questions you know any um we will get back to any questions or comments that you have posted and i'd like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and the um the conversation will really resonate with them and of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations because every subscription, every comment on YouTube helps our alg an, um, algorithm and, uh, you know, just boost me up a little bit more so I can create more content. And I look forward to you all joining me same again, same time, same place next week. And again, thank you so much, Sharon, for being on the show. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye.